Here's how you can get better at chipping under pressure. Let's get it on. Jermaine Harris here with The Golfer's Mind, and today I'm gonna to share with you how you can consistently chip it well under pressure. And I wanna give a special shout out to Steve Robinson who requested this video after saying that he chips it just fine in practice but he can't seem to execute under pressure and duffs chips and gets his chips wrong under pressure and that never happens in practice. Now that would suggest to me that it's mental rather than physical. Now of course, there may be some mechanical technical challenges with your chipping and as you guys know, I'm not a swing coach. What I'm talking about here is the mind. And you'll probably notice even during this video, I haven't got perfect chipping technique, but there's no pressure like filming a video, right? So let's see how I go under pressure. Now. What can happen in practice, of course, in practice what's happening is you're just hitting chips. You're just hitting chips, you're freeing it up. You're really free, you're grabbing the next ball, next chip, next chip. You're not thinking about anything really other than letting the ball flow towards your target. And you probably hold more chips in practice than you do in competition as well. Now, someone who is struggling in competition and chipping it well in practice is probably doing exactly that in practice. Chipping really well, chipping really well, looking at the target, letting it flow towards the target. Looking towards the target, letting it flow towards the target. If one goes wrong, shrugging it off, just like a kid. I've got a five-year-old son when we come out here and we practice our chipping. If one goes wrong, it's shrugged off into the target again. Whereas in competition, you could be filled with thoughts like, oh, if I get this up and down, I'll have a chance for a point score that could win. Oh, if I chip this close, I've got a chance of setting up myself for the back nine. I've got to get up and down, I've got to get up and down. And as I say that, what happens? I tense up and things start to change. And what happens is then, that tension from your mind that isn't there on the practice ground because you're just getting into the target and freely chipping the ball towards the target starts to affect the way you think about the chip. In fact, you actually start to think about it consciously, which you weren't doing when you were practicing. So what happens? You think, oh, oh, this is quite a tight lie. What happens if I chunk this? and already you've created an image of chunking it. So what lots of you will do then, you'll chunk the chip. What else could you do? As a result of thinking, oh, this is a tight lie, I might chunk it. You'll get scared and tense, and you'll thin it, you'll scull it across the green. And then what happens on the next chip? You don't want to thin it, so you chunk it. And you've moved away from that free, beautiful action that just sends the ball towards the hole. So my original advice, the first thing I would suggest is, Make sure that you work with a short game expert, PGA teaching professional, to make sure there's nothing mechanical or technical. So when you know that your technique is sound, then if it starts to go wrong, you know that it's happening from the mind. So I wish I had a magic pill, guys. I wish I could throw, throw a magic wand at you and automatically take care of any psychological challenges you have when you're chipping. I can't do that, I'd be a very rich man if I could. What I can do is suggest that you reinforce a new self-image. So Steve, the amazing gentleman who suggested I make this video, you might have developed the self-image of someone who practices, chips well in practice, and doesn't chip well in competition. And that self-image then shows itself in tension and bad chips in competition. So here's what you can do. You need to build a new self-image. There's no magic pill, but what you can do, every chip that you do in practice, every good chip, that you do in competition, one that creates an image of it rolling towards the hole, rolling in the hole, rolling close to the hole. Reinforce that, watch it and re-watch it, and re just like you do with the bad ones, guys. I know what you do with the bad chips. You watch it over and over again, can't believe I did that, can't believe I did that, and you live with it and watch it and watch it and watch it. Let those ones go, and every time you practice, every great one you roll in practice, every great one you roll in competition that rolls towards the hole or in the hole, watch it and watch it and watch it, go back to some of your chippings from the past, some of your great up and downs from the past. Go into it like Netflix in your mind and watch it and watch it and watch it to really build up that self-image. The next step then is stop telling people that you can't chip in competition. Stop telling people that you can't chip under pressure. If someone says to you, how's your short game? How's your chipping? You say, I'm getting better at it. I'm feeling really great about it. I'm getting better at it. I'm feeling really great about it. What you're doing is you're reprogramming your mind to behave how you want it to behave under pressure. If you're constantly telling people, the mind wants to prove you right. If you're constantly telling people, 
oh, I'm just rubbish at chipping under pressure. Your mind will prove you right. The next time you're in competition, the next time you're under pressure, you'll start to struggle again. So let's rebuild that self-image. Keep watching all the great chips over and over again in your mind. If someone asks you, say, I feel really great about my short game. It's getting better. And the next thing you can do is, in practice, make it fun. Turn it into a little game so you can pick a specific aim point, get into it, just like my five-year-old son, just so you can look at that target, wipe your mind of any negative thoughts, look at the target, let it go, carefree. If it's a bad one, just like that five-year-old kid that seems to be getting a better golf so quickly, just let it go, get into the target again. So you can do, I'm very lucky here, I've got these Cotswold stones and I've got a red pen, so I'm just gonna very quickly pop down because I know I know that it breaks left to right, so I'm gonna pick a target to the left of the hole, and I'm gonna paint it red very, very quickly, so I've got a game for you. Okay, so I've got my game set up there. I've got my red stone. You can use a tee peg or another ball, something that's gonna give you a target for your start line. It can be a discoloration in the grass, whatever it is. Now, the game is this. You don't win the game by chipping it in lots. You don't win the game by hitting good chips. You win the game by sticking to your mental routine. You win, a, you win the game by letting the bad ones go. You win the game by only thinking of your target. You win the game by taking that five-year-old carefree attitude. So, I've got a bit of a fun game set up here. Gonna let it roll, roll off the roll off the mind just like a five-year-old child would. I'm going to look at my redstone, which is my target. So I've got the target clear in my mind. The only other thing I think of is letting it break and watching it in my mind fall into the hole before I do it. My physical routine when I'm chipping, I take a few more extra practice strokes, usually whilst looking at the hole to give me that feel. Then the only thing I'm thinking of now is my target and putting the ball in the hole. <laughs> now I win there because of my routine, not because it went in. And that is all you would do. You'd continue that chip in practice. Now that one there, that one there is gonna be great for my mind because I'm gonna replay it and replay it and replay it to build up the self-image. Now, all, I, all I'm gonna do now is I would continue, continue that practice. Target, target, carefree, send it to the target, let it roll in. Carefree, carefree, target, send it to the target, let it roll in. Of course, they're not all gonna roll in, but you win the game by getting into that mental routine. Then, you might have a chip to win your club championship then it doesn't really matter what it's for. It's just another chip that you've practiced this routine for and you'll set up, it doesn't matter if it's your club championship, you'll go through your physical routine. And just like, just like you did in practice, the carefree attitude of the child, you're just gonna send it towards the target, let it break, let it drop in. All that's gonna do, it's gonna feel so natural And you'll hit a good chip and that's all it is guys build up the self-image realize that there's a psychological challenge as long as you've solved any technical issues and that will allow you to chip exactly like you do in practice under pressure because there'll be no difference inside your head i've been jermaine house with the golfer's mind i'll see you very soon